Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be sharing with you an interview that I had with VNA, who was originally a teacher and now is currently a cybersecurity supervision specialist after graduating from the Springboard Cybersecurity Bootcamp. So she came into cybersecurity with zero experience and was able to find a job in cybersecurity after just a few months of graduating from the Springboard Cybersecurity Bootcamp, which by the way is a cybersecurity bootcamp that has a 100% job guarantee if you qualify. I also have it linked in my description where you can get $1,000 off using my code with Sandra. But without further ado, let's get into the interview. I'd love to hear more about what you do, your current role, um, anything else you'd like to share. Yeah, so my name is VNA. So I currently work for the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta, and I am a cybersecurity supervision specialist. It's quite a mouthful, but um, what I do is I evaluate and promote the overall safety and soundness of our supervised institutions. So um it's really going in there and using my cybersecurity knowledge to assess an institution's cybersecurity practices. Um, and I also, yeah, and I also help with like any cybersecurity initiatives that the system or um, my local branch might have. So it's been really fun. I've been having a lot of fun. How long have you been in that role? So I've been at my role for now it's a year, actually, like next week. So what does kind of like a typical day look like for you? Yeah, so um, it's different every day. So it's really funny because I used to have a job where I it was all encompassing everything cybersecurity. So I did from incident response to risk analysis, you name it, I did it. And not, a day did not look the same. So I switched to a career where I thought it would be the same also every day, but yeah. it's the same cybersecurity Every day is different. Uh, my typical day would be if on a busy day, I'm on exam, examining a, an institution, a science, I would usually have to travel to that institution. Oh, and, interesting. Yeah. And um, and get together with their cybersecurity uh, folks and have conversations um, and do some examining work, um, ask questions, get to know the institution. Um, and make sure they're um, kids doing what they're supposed to be doing or what they say they're doing. Yeah, it's pretty much my day. Um, it's a lot of reading, a lot of putting puzzles together. Yeah, it's really tough, like putting it towards exactly what I do. <laughs> but um, it's been a learning experience. I think that being busy 24-7 to now having a job where I have set hours and um, it's more like a people person role. So not only is it the technical skills come in handy for my role, but also being able to speak with different individuals and you really get to know their cybersecurity practices. That's really cool. In my previous role, we kind of like did some of everything. So it um it's kind of like what you were saying, where some days we'll have a new vulnerability and suddenly it's like everything's on fire for a few weeks. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm doing, yeah, I'm not doing that anymore, but yeah, yeah. I know that feeling. <laughs> Still yeah. On your toes 24 seven. Yeah. Did you have any cybersecurity or tech background prior to joining the Springboard Cybersecurity Bootcamp? And how well do you think the program prepared you for the job? Yeah. So um, I did not have any cybersecurity or technical knowledge before deciding to join Springboard. I was really looking for guidance as to how to get started. I didn't know how to get started. Um, I've heard of the program through a friend. Actually, I was a teacher for 10 years. And oh. oh, wow. My neighbor, my teacher, she the teacher that was next to my classroom was doing Springboard and she was doing the software engineering track. We were having a conversation about what she was up to and she told me about her program and I was looking for a career switch. I wanted to transition to something else. Uh, the tech field was definitely an area that I was looking into, but I just didn't know how to get started. So I, it was like the perfect time actually. And so she, what she appreciated about the program was we had, I could work while I was doing the program and you know, learn new skills as well as um, have the support of the mentor and um, career guidance to be able to then make that transition. So it had the resources I needed to get started. I knew I couldn't do it by myself. They were really um, good about knowing that I did not have those technical skills mm -hmm. and were then able to guide me as to how to identify the areas that I was interested in and then tackling those skills. 
Um, a lot of it was more, um, yes, they have this program, but it's a, it takes a lot of initiative on the student's part to actually follow the path they're seeking. A piece of advice that I got from one of the career, I don't know, their career <laughs> individual. Like a mentor or? But, yeah, well, that's it's, a we had a mentor and then we uh-huh. had also, aside from mentors, we also had people that would help us with our career, the career aspects. Like a career counselor? or a career like a counselor. Guide. And they helped us guide through that process. But one advice that I got is don't discount those 10 years that you've had of experience. Those are still, mm-hmm. that's still, those are still valuable assets that you have gained and there's, they still matter. It actually helped me feel better about not having that technical background, but also maybe push myself harder to say, hey, I have these 10 years. Plus, let me tell you about these now technical skills that I have. So do you think that even coming in without any tech background, did you feel that the program was beginner friendly enough for you to be comfortable going through the courses and like the trainings? Like what were the projects like? Yeah. So I think it was definitely beginner friendly. Otherwise I would have (laughs) <laughs> they <gave> me- <laughs> because I, I was really afraid. I It was intimidating knowing mm-hmm. what cybersecurity was. It's a very important job. It's very, mm-hmm. you know, if you're not, as we were saying, on your toes, that's it for the organization or the individual. It's always one thing. It's always it's that one thing that could happen. Exactly. And so... Uh, yes. And so I knew I had to get these technical skills, but they, their program is kind of goes into steps to eases the way, eases the students uh, into more difficult tasks. Mm. So it goes into introducing, you know, cybersecurity terms, um, talking to other cybersecurity folks and understanding what the job is, more getting to know the environment and then delving into the later more complex uh, tasks such as completing a risk assessment, doing a network diagram, which is I had no idea what that oh. was beforehand, but then I learned what it was and actually mm-hmm. did one. And then after you would go with your mentor and your mentor would like could review it with you or you had um, TAs that would actually also help you. If at any moment I would stuck be stuck, I could ping someone and ask for help. It sounds like you have a lot of support from your mentor and career guidance team. Yes. So what do you think made the biggest impact in terms of getting your first job in cybersecurity? Like what was the whole job search process like after you finished the program? Yes. Yeah, so I think the job process, uh, getting that first job is the most intimidating thing. Yeah. Especially transitioning into cyber or any technical field with having, how do you, how do you even like present a resume? It's intimidating. <laughs> intimidating first I prepared (laughs) I followed all the advice from springboard which is like you know let's go over your resume let's go over your LinkedIn let's um, also prepare for interviews behavioral and technical interviews so once you start applying you'll be ready Um, so I made sure that my resume was tech friendly so how I would apply for a teaching job would not be the same way I would apply for a yeah. cyber role or a tech role. Since I didn't have previous experiences to maybe fulfill some of those <laughs> requirements, mm-hmm. I made sure I had other types of projects. So I made sure I filled those up with projects from Springboard, but also there are a lot of other resources available online where you could get little certs that don't cost anything. I did that as well. So I filled it in. I know how to do host security. So let me tell you how I did it. And so I made sure I filled in my resume according to also the things I like, but what the, what the position entailed. So I received yeah. a lot of guidance through that. Also, I think something that's really important, as I've said about my 10 years as a teacher is a lot of those roles are not very entry-level friendly or they don't look entry-level friendly. And by, what I mean by that is they require three or five years as an entry role. It's so always like that. 10 I years. And I was thinking, I was like, how does one acquire that? Like if I was a grad, a student off of college, how would one have be an entry role level with 10 years of experience, right? You would have to have started in elementary school. From the advice I received, hey, you have experience. Now t- let's turn those soft skills into skills that you would actually be be useful in the tech field. So I made sure I put in I had presentation skills, communication skills. I could, mm-hmm. you know, uh, critical thinking skills. Um, I made sure I highlighted those, and I think that made me stand apart from others. 
I applied anyway. Uh, if I saw a five-year nice. role, I applied anyway. And luckily, my first job required minimum five years. And I still Wow. Got yeah. Okay. So that's like a key thing, I feel like, because so many job listings nowadays for entry-level roles, they'll still come with those, like you said, three to five years of experience required. And it's like, it, it just makes people not want to apply at all. It sounds like for you, on top of the springboard stuff that you did, you also went out on your own and added the skills that you were interested in, cater towards like the jobs that you wanted to go for, and then added those and those projects onto your resume, just ignoring the like years of experience requirements. Yes. Um, awesome. I was really determined. <laughs> and, yeah, that's awesome. Yes. And I think also as a teacher, you always tell your students, you know, go for it. Don't be intimidated. You have to yeah. be that that encouragement and we don't do that for ourselves I notice as as adults we stop yes. stop hearing that advice we don't have that those people anymore of, aside from our friends and family mm -hmm. but you know we should be our own support system and really encourage ourselves and have those positive words that we would give our friends so hopefully for the audience that's going to be watching this they take those words to heart because I get questions all the time about where the entry-level jobs they're all asking for to three plus years of experience. Based on your experience, what was the importance of having a mentor throughout your boot camp? Do you still stay in touch with your mentor even after the program? Yes, my mentor is amazing. Is amazing. I still <laughs> he's amazing. Um, uh, hi, Jay. <laughs> uh, he's amazing. He played a key role in my development. I think if it wasn't for him, I I honestly wouldn't be wow. <laughs> because um. As I said, I had to be proactive, but he was mm -hmm. also very active on his part in seeing where I was in the program, uh, mm -hmm. advising my work, but also being that support system that understood because of how, you know, the demo, his own, you know, experience, other students that he's mentored. He really understood what I was going through. I think one key thing that he did was there's a woman in cybersecurity and one of the first meetings with him, he's like, join it. Please join mm. it. And um, I did. I joined it and it taught me skills. I got scholarships through them for technical wow. training. He played a role in that. He um, pushed me. It's that encouragement that you need. Something that Springboard does is uh, at the end of our, our track, we have to pass a behavioral and technical interview. I think oh, it's, uh, yeah, so it's two technical interviews and one behavioral. A lot of the questions are actually, I think Springboard has them public. So it's not just for students. You could just Google Springboard behavioral questions and technical questions, and those are available. And those are the ones I used. I also Googled um, a lot of resources online. And I just, I think there's like a hundred page, a hundred questions for cybersecurity interview questions. I've seen those. I've you also know, used those before. Yeah. <laughs> just I know exactly what you're talking about. I memorized wow. all 100. I memorized. That is because, dedication. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, I am going to get a job. I need the job after the summer. I will have no more job as a teacher. And so I also did that. So those technical interviews were very difficult, more difficult than my actual interviews. <laughs> They're cybersecurity experts giving you these interviews. They were very detailed and they were all encompassing. So even if uh. for example, a role was just, let's say, based on it was just a vulnerability management role. Uh, they would just maybe focus on that. But this, these interviews, it was everything. Yeah, it's uh, so broad. Yeah. And so it was even more horrible. But at the same time, I could answer any question that could be thrown at me. I was not scared going into the interviews. Yeah, I did two interviews. My second interview, I got my job. Wow. So how long was the whole job search process then? Was it you finished the program and then basically almost right away? you yeah, got an a, offer a month I think three weeks wow yeah. that's um, actually insane <laughs> yes so uh, yes it's not it's not the same story for everyone mm -hmm. but and it, it for me it was a lot of sleepless nights trying to memorize these questions <laughs> trying to yeah. really have, dedicate my time into my resume and and I know a lot of people don't have that uh, that privilege to do that, you know, many, many have families and it's just mm -hmm. time is not really a resource that they might have. I understand that. But uh, I think that it, it is possible. I think if I have one tip that got me my job, 
that I think can help anyone. And you hear it all the time, but for cyber, it's especially important is research the organization, but research their cyber. What projects are they working on? Have mm -hmm. they had any breaches? And why, why are you being hired, right? And so I made sure I made, I did all of that. And I had found some information on my organization. And when it was my turn to ask questions, I asked them, I was like, is it because of a breach? It's not this job, it was another one. Um, I was like, did you, is it yeah. because of a breach that you've had? And they're like, how do you know we have? <laughs> so for them, it was like, wow, um, you did your homework, but not only you're demonstrating the skills that we need, at this job to find adversaries, to be able to do some threat intelligence. What can you say to you, the audience, about your overall experience with Springboard? Would you recommend it? My experience at Springboard was positive. Uh, I think that I needed that guidance, someone to help me get started. I had no background experience, technical experience in cyber. And so I really needed someone to help guide me every step of the way from learning <laughs> the terms to actually preparing me for that interview. That's why I chose Springboard because of that. And also it was flexible with my time. I could work and study. If a person seeks that guidance, then I would definitely recommend it. Um, say, hey, if you need help preparing what to study for an interview, I think Springboard would be great. Also needing that support system that you might not have and wanting it, they provide it. And they understand that uh, what your needs might be since all the students there are all seeking the same same aid. Of course, obviously, it takes a lot of initiative on our individual's part, but I would totally recommend it. Well, thank you for joining me on this little interview today. I'm glad to hear that more success stories are coming out for boot camps because this path, even though it's not as typical as like a college degree, it feels like a lot more doable for a lot of people compared to going back for a four-year program or yeah and like I, I was talking about this with some other another person that may also made a tr career transition mm -hmm. and we we're talking about how it's just not technical skills that these organizations are wanting they want soft skills if you possess those skills you're halfway there um well almost halfway there yeah it's not just the tech skills well thank you Manny it was awesome meeting you today I'll talk to you soon bye bye